Okay, welcome back from your break. This is video number two of lecture number five, um, the engineering design course. Um, this is the slide that we stopped at, so this is where we'll pick things up, uh, at least for seven more minutes. Um, so I'm actually going to use this example um, throughout the rest of the lecture. Um, and this is a, a fictional example. It's, it's something that I made up, um, but it's, um, well, both humorous um, and I think representative of what actually happens in the real world um, when um, an engineering designer interacts with a non-technical client um, in trying to solve a design problem. So um, the situation that, that is represented in this slide um, is the idea that an engineering designer has been approached by a client and the problem that the client wants to solve um, is simply uh, the statement, I want something to sit on. So the client says, I want something to sit on. And that's it. And the engineering designer is like, okay, what does that mean? So um, I want something to sit on could be any one of these possible solutions, right? Um, you could just sit on the floor without um, needing any solution at all uh, in terms of a chair or something like that. Um, that that would certainly solve the problem that the client needs something to sit on, sit on the floor, client. Um, or the client could mean something like a, a bean bag, so a very kind of casual uh, form-fitting solution. The client could mean um, a rolling office chair, some uh, kind of a formal chair maybe that the client uh, wants to sit and do some work with. Uh, but then, of course, there are other things that people sit on. Um, their primary purpose is not necessarily sitting, uh, but something else. But but you do sit on them. Uh, for example, when you go to the bathroom, you sit on a toilet. Um, so maybe that's what the client's referring to. I'm not sure. Um, or maybe the client wants to go on a bike ride and wants to sit on a bicycle seat. Um, so as you can see, um, from their initial statement of, I want something to sit on, um, the design solutions um, are, are essentially infinite because not enough information and certainly not enough quantitative information has been given by the client to the engineering designer um, to, to really um, put a clear set of parameters and metrics on this problem. Um, so this is it's a little tongue in cheek, it's a little humorous, maybe over the top, uh, but this is literally what happens most of the time when an engineering designer and a client meet for the first time. The client has in their mind, um, you know, a, a solution, but their articulation um, of, of that solution and the <laughs> needs leading up to that solution um, usually are, are, are quite poor. Um, so, so keep this example in mind as we move through the rest of the slide deck, because I'll just be referring back to it. Um, I want something to sit on. Anyway, next slide. Okay. So a lot of what um, engineering designers do, um, at least in this stage of processing a customer needs statement, um, is, is what I describe as quantifying the qualitative. So um, the customers have these kind of poorly thought out, very qualitative, that's uh, as in non-numerical um, needs that they're trying to articulate to the engineering designer with the expectation that the designer is going to be able to convert um, kind of these poorly articulated customer needs into a design solution. Um, and so a lot of what the engineering designer has to do, has to do early on um, is try to quantify and organize what they're being told by the client. So um, it's important to keep in mind at this stage that most customers are not engineers. They are not technical people. Um, and so unlike us, unlike engineers and technical people, <clears throat> their um, ability to articulate needs um, is often very vague and very qualitative. They um, very rarely are able to put numerical values um, on, on anything that they're trying to articulate. So it's important to keep that in mind. Um, so in this, this previous slide that I showed you guys, the I want something to sit on slide, um, the customer might say something like, oh, I, I want um, a seat that's comfortable or I want a seat that's, that's easy to use. And you as the engineering designer have to sit back and think to yourself, well, what, what in the heck does this client really mean by a comfortable seat or a seat that's easy to use? Um, and so a lot of this quantifying the qualitative um, is a back and forth process, a conversational process between 
the client and the engineering designer. So the designer must literally ask the client um, what in the heck they mean or otherwise somehow figure out what is meant by these vague statements and try to pin down the vague statements into something that is a little more quantitative, a little more um, targeted. So for example, you might discover in talking to your client that by um, comfortable seat, they mean a seat that provides, for example, adequate back support. Maybe that's what they mean by comfortable, adequate back support. But you wouldn't know that when they initially told you they wanted a comfortable seat. You actually have to have the conversation with them to discover that, ah, the seat that they've been sitting in gives them back pain. And so they really want something that eliminates the back pain, for example. Um, easy to use, <coughs> excuse me, easy to use might refer to the adjustability of the seat. You know, it's quite easy to maybe sit down and stand up in the seat, but once you're down in the seat, um, can you easily adjust its height? Can you recline in the seat? Can you lock the seat into a position? Um, all of those more, um, more intimate details come out of this conversation between you, the engineering designer, and the client. So you really have to get used to asking the client questions, and the questions are really um, why, how, and what type questions to help clarify the objectives um, that the customer has in presenting you with a customer need statement and then you as the designer converting that um, into engineering design objectives. So why, how, and what? And we'll see in a, in a future slide um, how some of those questions actually then map onto um, the document that, that you guys can create to start to clarify the customer needs. Okay, so Oh, you know what? I'm about at seven minutes here, so I'm going to take a quick pause and uh, be back after you guys take a break, and then we'll wrap up. Okay, see you in just a few moments.